Hey, Eagles fans, if you're out here in Arizona for the Super Bowl, come hang out with us at Philly's Sports Bar and Grill located in Tempe on Saturday. We're going to do a live Eagle Eye podcast, live takeoff with John Clark. Eagle Eye gets kicked off at around 430. Ruben and I will be out there getting everyone ready for the big game. Stop by. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah, can't wait. This is the Eagle Eye podcast presented by Nissan. He's Ruben Frank. I'm Dave Zangaro. It's Saturday. No, or it's, I'm sorry, it's Friday. Saturday is the live pod. It's Friday. There's no availability. Uh, I lost track of the days of the week a while ago. Uh, no availability today, and that's why I thought it was Saturday. That's a good point. Yeah, usually we talk to talk to guys on Friday, and then Saturday is, is dark. But, uh, yeah, we're getting there. We're getting close. Uh, I'll tell you what, early in the week it seemed like that Sunday would never get there, get here. Uh, but – See the light at the end of the tunnel. Finally have some football. Yeah, and, you know, talking to a bunch of players later in the week on Thursday, and, and they're looking at us like, when is this game going to get here? And actually, I talked to Darius Slay about it, and he mentioned, he's like, yeah, you know, we could have come out Friday and played this game. But then he thought about it more, and he goes, you know what? No, actually, it's, it's pretty cold <laughs> back in Philly. I'm glad we're out here. Yeah, they, they would have been in the bubble, most likely. At least they're outdoors. Doesn't like the fields are great, but at least they're outside. Think they're ready? Somebody told me it felt like training. I was Dillard. Said it felt like training camp because it was so hot. Oh, that makes sense. Uh, I do feel like they're ready. I, I really do. I, I, you know, you just kind of get a sense being around them that um, they're not in awe of the moment. That look, I'm not saying they're going to win. Uh, my prediction will, will be online really soon but uh I, they do seem ready to me and I, it starts with Jalen who uh is always ready I mean he's he's just no matter no matter what the moment is um he's ready for it and he's it's never too big for him it's been incredible to watch him grow to this point uh, as a 24 year old quarterback in a second year as a starter and uh he's not just talented he's just got that calmness around him that kind of allows him to play at his best all the time no matter what fourth and and nine you know a minute left and, and you're on your own 25 whatever the situation is he's able to be at his best and I think I think the team being ready kind of resonates from him and I, I talked about that a little bit on Thursday you know he talked about how uh, he knows they're all looking to him and and he takes that responsibility really seriously and he handles it better than any 24 year old I've ever seen. Yeah. And I think the reason that works is because they're prepared on the football side of things. This is a very well coached team. And I think that sometimes we think of coaching in terms of just X's and O's or scheme uh, game day decisions. But sometimes the mark of good coaches is having your players prepared for every single detail and all that work that happens during the week kind of emphasizes that. And it shows that like, that's where they're really good. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you might not agree with some schematic things they do, but you can tell their coach really well to do that thing. Yeah. No, that's a, a good way to put it. And I think the one word, I mean, it's a word we hear so much that it almost loses its meaning, but detail is, is such a big part of Nick Sirianni's coaching philosophy. And what it, what it does is it prepares you for anything. If you, if you take every single detail and prepare for it, every single eventuality, every single possibility, and you address it at some point, then whatever happens, you're ready for it. Yeah, I agree with that. And I, like, I, I think that without that, you can't be calm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it takes that work during the week to feel really confident and to feel like you, you've done the hard work. Like Sundays should be easy. Yeah. Yeah. Back when we used to, when I used to play piano recitals, you know, pe some of the kids would get nervous and they'd ask me why I wasn't nervous. And it's like, cause I'm, I'm prepared. I know the piece. Why would I be nervous? I know how to play it. If I didn't really know it, if I wasn't comfortable with it, then I'd be a wreck. Yeah, and that doesn't work in football. Like you need to be prepared, yeah. and that's another big part of Nick being a great coach that gets overlooked too. I mean, he sets the standard there, and the other coaches have to fall in line. You know, you, you think like they're like a guy like Jeff Stalin's been doing this a million years. 
he has to fall in line. Yeah, he has to fall in line with everything Nick wants to do, and he does because uh, he understands that it, it. There's reasons behind it, yeah. and and once a head coach like Nick can kind of show that. Yeah, we're not just doing this for for giggles. Like there there are reasons why we're so detailed, uh, and we see that on game day, right? Like we don't see a ton of missed assignments. We yeah. don't see blown coverages in the secondary all the time. Like I, those things pop up. Yeah. Like there are penalties and there there are things that pop up. There are there are MAs out there, but for the most part, this is a pretty clean team for that reason. Yeah, no, I think that's true. I, and I was just going to look for that quote from from Gannon about uh, how detailed. Nick is, and he, he said, uh, I don't, he kind of didn't really finish the quote, but he, he said, really, the the process Nick has in place to get the players better, you could talk about it for three days. He said, it's nauseating, but it works. The detail of that, Jesus Christ, Nick, really? <laughs> I got to type in every play and his leverage and this and that. Yes, that's how I want it. Okay. Yeah. That's a standard. Yeah. We hear them say that word all the time. It's a standard. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of it's from, from Nick. They wouldn't be here without it. I agree. Do you ever find yourself this during the, the past week, but like, freaking Nick Sirianni and Jalen Hurts are in the Super Bowl? I had that moment Thursday, uh, and I'm sitting in the back of a press conference for Nick, which is very weird for me. I'm, we're normally up in the front row. I didn't feel like fighting with those people to get up there. You did on Thursday, yeah. so uh, I'm sitting kind of in the back, and it was almost like I wasn't there. I was just like watching it happen, and that's when it hit me. I was like, "Holy cow!" Yeah, it hit, like, yeah. It hit me Thursday too. Yeah. Um, it was funny though. He's he's like, I think on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, he uh, we all the Philly guys were sitting up front, mm-hmm. and he comes down. And he's like, "Oh, you guys are all in your normal seats." And like, we were all kind of lined yeah. up the same way we do at the Novacare. So that was kind of funny. That was funny. We're yeah. trying to go. Routine's important, right? Exactly. We just didn't. I don't. I went in there like half an hour before it started to take a spot. I barely got a spot in the front row. Yeah, uh, I mean. Some of those people must have slept there last night. I think night, they stayed overnight. Like two nights ago, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's get into some matchups, all right? Let's do it. <laughs> we talked about uh, the, the the Chiefs offense and how the Eagles can try to slow them down. Let's flip sides today. Eagles offense, and, and we'll start with the quarterback again. Jalen Hurts against this Spags defense. This Spags defense has not been as Spagsy as normal. It's not as aggressive as we've seen from him in the past. Spagsy, yeah, um, yeah, uh, they're they're not bad. I think the the thing that makes their defense so good is their offense. I mean, their defense doesn't have to be on the field all that much. Um, so, Pat Pat Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, is a big part of their defense from that standpoint. But um, they're 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 not bad. I mean, they're not a bad defense. I mean, in the you know in the postseason, they've held uh, held their opponents to. Well, Jacksonville scored 20, I think 20, 23. Um, and the offense hasn't scored a ton of points in, in the postseason. Yeah. 23, 27, maybe. I think, I think it was 23, 20 and 27, 23. But, uh, you know, he's – look, if if the Chiefs win, he's a three-time Super Bowl defensive coordinator. I mean, he won one, one with the Giants and one with the Chiefs and got to a Super Bowl with the Eagles as linebackers coach in 04, uh, one of many former Eagles coaches on Andy's staff. But – um, I, he, he's pretty good. I mean, they, they're not a great run defense. I think they're a better pass defense. I really think the Eagles can run on them. I really do. I think they can pass on them. I think they can throw on them, but I, I think they're going to run a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nick, it was interesting. Sirianni on Thursday was asked about playing keep away from, from Mahomes, and he, he hemmed and hawed a little bit, but he, he did acknowledge that, yes, that's a strategy we could use. I don't think it's a terrible one. Now, I don't think you you, you cut your, your offense off at, at the knees to do it. Like, you have to be what you are offensively. But if it can fit into the game plan, you think can score the most points, then you do it. Yeah. I mean, it, 41-33, my, I might pick that score. Because, <laughs> Where have I heard that before? Yeah, it rings a bell. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a wide open, back and forth, freewheeling, high-scoring game. I'm curious. I really think he was put up some points on them. Yeah, I'm curious to see how Spags handles it because his MO for so many years was like blitz heavy and play a ton of man behind it. He's changed. Like even like we saw Wink Martindale change at the end of the year. Like that that that's not the way the NFL is going. It's it's a lot more zone. It's a lot more you know let the let the front get after it. Now he'll he'll I think he'll try to blitz Jalen. I think that's still what he's going to think is the best 
bet. And he might not be wrong about that, but we've also seen Jalen get a lot better at it. Yeah, certainly. Uh, his release has gotten quicker. His his recognition and understanding of of blitzes has gotten better. Um, it's he 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 looks at it as a weapon for him, not for the defense. Um, it was interesting. And he was talking about Spags. What day were we up there? Wednesday. Yeah. And he, he talked about how much he learned from Jim Johnson and how a lot of those principles are still in his in his scheme, which is kind of. Interesting. The Eagles are going to be facing a a version of the Jim Johnson defense. The storylines in this game are so twisted up. There's so many of them. Yeah, and it's like you know, the Eagles are facing some Jim Johnson philosophy. Andy is facing the the trench play that he brought to Philly. It's all jumbled up. Yeah, yeah. It's really like two teams that are mirror images in a lot of ways of each other. Yeah. I think they scored the same number of points too this year. Saw that somewhere. Okay. Including the postseason. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I was like, there's no, they didn't do that in the regular no. season. Okay. I got you. Um, Eagles receivers against the Chiefs corners. That's a big mismatch. I think so. I think so too. I mean, you, and the Eagles kind of feel like that every week because you have AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, but Jarius is a good corner. He's a good corner. And I, I think I told you this the other day. One of our million podcasts did. I talked to Snead about it traveling and whether or not he'll do that. He said he's not. I don't know if I bought that necessarily. Uh, I don't know if it's their best option uh, because the Eagles do move those guys around quite a bit. And uh, but if you travel with AJ, he doesn't play in the slot as much as Devontae. So maybe that's the best bet. Yeah. But I, I still feel pretty good if I'm the Eagles looking at AJ Brown against anyone. Anyone. Yeah, and it's – I mean, the Eagles won their two games against the Giants and, and Niners without the receivers really being factors. I think some of that was Jalen's health just trying to – I mean, they were running the ball in both games, and obviously the Niners game was just weird the way it played out. But they didn't really need to throw the ball to the receivers a lot. Um, they're going to need that Sunday. Yeah. And I'd also like to see – Quez involved again. We haven't really seen much from Quez lately. Yeah, he's going to be going up against a rookie and uh, the two rookies in this starting secondary. Yeah, and I think that's a matchup. And I, you know, it really it's since since his fumble and then the Dallas game, his his snaps have gone down, his targets have gone down, his production's gone way down. Um, his snaps actually haven't gone down. His targets have gone down, um, which is interesting. Uh, but. Maybe Jalen just doesn't trust him after after that stuff. That was Minshew, obviously those two picks, but he had the bad fumble. He had the two, got out muscled for a couple of interceptions, and he hasn't really been a factor. But he's such a weapon. He's still one of the best deep threats in the league. Um, they might feel like it's not worth the risk if he's going to be, you know, have negative plays. Yeah. Uh, but they could sure use the the explosiveness that he that he brings. I'll tell you what, if if they travel. Sneed against AJ Brown. Jalen Watson can't cover Devontae Smith. Throw there all day. Yeah. All day. He can't cover him. There's I he just can't. Devontae's too good of a route runner. Uh that's that's where you go if you're the Eagles. And look, you want to get AJ Brown involved. He's a great player. But if you have Devontae Smith on Jalen Watson all game, seventh round rookie, can't cover him. Just can't do it. Eagles run game. I think they can pass. You think they can run. I think there's probably a chance they do both in this game. Yeah. How much of their run game is because that's what will work, and how much of it is playing keep away? Uh, I think a little of both. I think they feel like they can run it against anyone. And the Chiefs' run defense certainly isn't anything special. They gave up four and a half yards of carry. Um, Eagles. Not a lot of teams have been able to run against them because they get down. Yeah, and that's their best run defense. If you look at the carries against them, it's really low. And, and the Eagles are actually the same way. There's some games where, like, they allow six yards. I mean, even I think the Giants averaged six yards a carry against them in the playoffs, but, you know, they kept running down 30 points. Yeah. So who cares? That's your coach of the year, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of have a problem with that. But, um, but yeah, I, I look, with this O-line, um, and, and it's, really, um, it's really interesting how the O-line was – you don't have a lot of – Mine's a big topic, but it was this week. Everybody, I mean, those guys, all of them, well, maybe not Isaac, but, um, I mean, Lane, Jordan, 
uh, Kelsey and, and uh, Dickerson didn't always have big crowds around, but he was, I mean, this O line was like the star of, of the Super Bowl. They should be. And because we keep coming back to that, like th- this is a team with Jalen Hurts and Miles Sanders and AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and Dallas Goddard. And I think each one of those players will still tell you the star should be the offensive line. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And uh, they have so much confidence in their ability to run against anyone. If you can run for 150 and four tu- or three touchdowns against the Niners, I like your chances against the Chiefs. And we talked about Jalen Hurts and being involved in the run game earlier this week. His over-under for this game, 50.5 yards. I don't know if he'll hit it, but I think he has a chance to run here. I agree. I agree. I think that the the team, the offense, the Jalen that we saw in the two playoff games, this is a completely different – I mean, this is like – a different we're gonna see a different team different approach different they have you have to yeah yeah so uh, but i do think they are going to try to run it and i think gainwell is going to be a big part of that and i think miles i think all hands on deck for this one yeah and i was talking to ken flagel earlier this week and he he brought that up on his own that the rush lanes you have to be disciplined if you're rushing jalen hurts you can't freelance you have to stay there because if you have to get in a situation, he even says, like, if our defensive linemen have to chase him down, they can't. We don't have the players to chase down Jalen Hurst from behind on that defensive line. And, and he's right. They don't. Yeah. I mean, they have some good players there, but you're just not catching him. So you have to be really disciplined. And we've seen teams do different things all year, trying to keep Jalen in the pocket, make him a pure pocket passer. I think that, I mean, the craziest example was the Titans game. They basically stopped rushing him. I, I mean, that was an extreme, but I, I think that, that you have to be disciplined against him. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think, uh, man, Jalen has a real opportunity to have a have – a, uh, there's going to be opportunities for him to have a huge game. Yeah, I agree. All right, next big one, uh, and this is a challenging one. Chris Jones, who is clearly one of the best defensive players in the NFL. Uh I have him up here in my matchups that I wrote against Landon Dickerson because that's where I think he'll be more than anywhere else. And that makes sense to me because Landon is a younger player and he's got the elbow injury and you probably try to take advantage of that. But they will move Chris Jones up and down that line. They will try to find their best matchup early on in that game. They'll try to figure out how the Eagles are going to play him and then they'll try to exploit it. Yeah, he's, he's their best defensive player by far, I would say. At this point, and uh, he he can wreck a game. I mean, he's that good. I, I I like the Eagles' chances of maybe not shutting him down, but keeping him at bay. Yeah, I do too. Because I mean, that's they they try to find the weak spot. I, where's the weak spot? Without, I mean, I, I guess you go after Landon because you don't know about his health. But there's no weak spot. I think maybe they they put him out on lane for one snap to see if the groin holds up against a bull rush from Chris Jones. But I mean, after what we saw Lane do last week against the defensive player of the year, I, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. And I mean, and he's, he was third, so he's, he's facing two of the top three in you know, yeah. two weeks. What's new. He always has to face yeah crazy good rushers. Uh, and the last one is Dallas Goddard, who for whatever reason, like we haven't spent a lot of time talking about Dallas this week but he could be a big weapon in this game yeah and he's i mean he's been a really good postseason player his whole career um he i mean he's he's just so solid uh it it is true i mean he uh i didn't talk to him all week said hi to him in the hallway that was about it um but yeah i I, look i think they're both i think they're gonna throw a lot i mean i I think i think both teams are gonna throw a lot Uh, i know i said they're gonna run a lot but i also think that it's gonna be really balanced attack and Goddard's always open, and they're going to try to throw a lot of deep stuff, but I think Dallas will catch his five, six, seven passes too. Yeah, you're probably right, and if they get aggressive, then you can try some of those tight end screens, get him get him moving. The, the, I looked at their numbers. I mean, they were kind of a middle-of-the-pack defense against tight ends, but they gave up nine touchdowns to opposing tight ends. Not many teams gave up more, so when they get in the red zone, maybe that's an area Dallas could shine. I mean, he does that. He does that anyway. So it's really a shame he missed those. What did he miss? Five games. Five games. Um, he he was second to Kelsey in yards per game by tight ends, uh, and he would have been close to eleven hundred yards if he continued the same pace in those other five games. Um, so you, you know, I think he's 
that's the kind of weapon he is. I, I mean, I throw to him. He's always open. He's always right there. Jalen's got a great chemistry with him. He always, you know, he, he knows how to get him the ball in a position where Dallas can catch it easily and, and get yards after the catch, which he's so good at. Yeah. It's going to be fun. These are two pretty good yards after catch teams. Yeah. Yeah. Big time. I think the Chiefs are number one in the league. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're pretty unbelievable at it. But yeah. the Eagles are right. I mean, Eagles are very good at it, too. They are. Yeah. At Nissan, we just made your choice for a new car, an easier one than ever with our most exciting and fuel-efficient lineup. The choice is yours. Get great offers across our full line. Shop your local Nissan store today at NissanUSA.com. Catch all the sports action and more at Rivers Casino Philadelphia. Whether it's the money line or the pass line, there's something for everyone in the great sports book. Rivers Casino Philadelphia, Philly loves a winner. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Opioid addiction is a national public health crisis. The Someone You Know podcast from the Independence Blue Cross Foundation offers inspiring stories that challenge stigma, offer hope, and humanize the disease of addiction. Download the new season three of Someone You Know on all major podcast platforms. Group time for some points bet over under numbers. We have the two Eagles receivers here, A.J. Brown, 70.5 yards, Devontae Smith, 65.5. Over on both. I'm speaking over on everything. <laughs> he, that. His final scores be 99 and 83. <laughs> uh, They've yeah, run for I think they'll 500 both, and passed for 500. I think they'll both be in that 80 to 100 range. I, I love the Devontae over. Yeah. What is it, 65? Six, 65 and a half. Because I love that matchup. Yeah. That matchup. Look, Sneed's a really good corner. I think AJ's better. Yeah. But, man, I, Devontae Smith against Jalen Watts, I all day, all day throw it to him. Yeah, I think they're both. Uh, I think they're both going to have big games, and like, like you can it. even make Devonte your move the sticks, you know, sure. make him make him run a, a eight yard hitch. It's sure. going to be there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and he'll catch it every time. It's time to get your swagger back with Points Bet Sportsbook. Points Bet, your move, Rube. So uh, we're we're recording this on uh, on Friday, the day after we found out Jalen Hurts. Did not win the MVP. No surprise. Not a big surprise. We all knew this. Once the once the, the all pro voting comes out and you see Patrick Mahomes runs away with And it's the same people that vote. Yeah. So it it there it, it kinda be. it kinda takes away yeah. some of the but the intrigue. But second for a twenty four year old kid in his second year as a starter is incredible. Uh, you think about how far he's come and, and where he is now, it's it's really a remarkable story. Uh, to be second in the MVP voting, a Super Bowl quarterback, second team All Pro. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you know, a Pro Bowler for the first time. I mean, this is this is incredible stuff for a kid that age. And Andy Reid had a great point about Jalen yesterday. And nobody knows more about quarterbacks than Andy. He said, you know, he's just going to get better. He said that's how it goes at that position. You know, he, he, and Andy's thing was always, it takes till your fifth year in an offense to really to really get it and to really have all the answers. And he's in a second. Uh, at some point, he's going to hit a ceiling. I, I don't know when that'll be, but uh, the thought that he's going to get better is a scary one. It should be scary to anyone in the NFC East. Yeah, heck, if he takes a jump like he did this year, watch out. Oh, then now he's now he's Mahomes. That yeah. was best ever. But well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't bet against it. Yeah. I mean, it, it was going to be tough for him to win the MVP. This year, Mahomes, the, the numbers are. Although I would have loved to seen if he didn't get hurt in Chicago, it would have been a little, little closer. Probably. Yeah, because I think it was honestly, I think it was really close at that point. Yeah, and it should have been. Yeah, yeah, it's the second time in you know five years that an Eagles quarterback had a real shot and they got hurt. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. I hope the uh, comparison stops there. <laughs> I think it will. Yeah, I think it will too. And then the assistant coach of the year, Shane Steichen was up for that. He finished third among the three finalists. Uh, D'Amico Ryan's won that. Ben Johnson from uh, from Detroit was second. I'll, I'll go through a few of these. Uh, and Leslie Frazier, former Eagles assistant, was fourth. Gannon was sixth. Stout was seventh. It's pretty good for a position coach. Mm -hmm. um, speaks volumes. Um, I voted for him third. Actually, gave him a, a vote. Um, Jalen did get third in uh, offensive player of the year behind Justin Jefferson and Mahomes. Um, and 
And Hassan Reddick got fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting behind Bosa, Parsons, and Chris Jones. He got a couple uh, first-place votes. Two first-place votes. He only appeared on seven to 50 ballots, including this one. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. How in the world did he only appear on seven to 50? My fellow voters are morons. Uh, <laughs> uh, That's crazy. Garrett Wilson got rookie uh, got rookie there obviously no eagles in in that mix in that mix um, defensive rookie of the year sauce gardner uh, and what else do we have i think that's all oh um coach of the year uh nick got nick was fifth behind dable shanahan peterson mcdermott uh andy reed was seventh so oh and comeback player of the year bg was fourth Okay. Um, they gave it to Geno Smith, which or we gave it to Geno Smith, which I get it, but he just didn't play last year. <laughs> so I, I mean, what's he coming back from? He's coming back from being a disappointment. Backing up Russell Wilson. Yeah. Um, so I, I didn't really get that. So um, Brandon Graham only got uh, two votes, including this one. I sound like a homer, but I, I looked at, you know, I went, I went, um, I believe I went. Bar- Saquon first because it's based on regular season. Yeah, they went Saquon, I think McCaffrey, BG, or BG McCaffrey. So it's legitimate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's all we got there. Anything else that's on your mind? Um, no, I'm I'm stoked for Sunday. I, just... I, I do want to share one story. Yeah. Uh, that I got this week. Uh, talk to Isaac Samalu for about, gosh, ten to twelve minutes, which. Is 10 to 12 minutes longer than we normally get with Isaac Samalu. He doesn't like attention. He doesn't, doesn't like, like anything. talking to reporters. He's, uh, you know, he's he's just kind of gruff in the locker room. He's a nice enough guy when you do corner him. Uh, so I, I walked up to him the other day and, and sat down at his table and started it off with an apology that I was even there. Uh, but then we really started talking about, you know, it's the last Super Bowl for him had to be a little bittersweet because he's in his second year. They win it, and he is a big team guy, and he was excited. He was happy, but he got benched earlier in the year for Chance Warmack at first, and then right. Stefan Wisniewski. Uh, and he I just forgot about Chance played one game. Yeah, and they were like, oh, we can't do that. It did not go so well. Uh, so, you know, he was there for that. He played some special teams. He was a backup, but he was a third-round pick a year earlier, and everyone thought he was just going to be plug and play, and he wasn't. He wasn't ready at that time. And uh, to see him come back from that, and then also last year, the list Frank injury, it's it's a lot. So, you know, I said, what changed for you? Like, what what made the difference? And he opened up and he said, uh, he, he started speaking with a psychiatrist about um, just how to handle being in the NFL. And it, it's actually Lonnie Rosen, who's kind of a, a world-renowned a sports psychiatrist, and he's Lane has credited him quite a bit. He's uh, he's a consultant with the Eagles, but his whole thing is breaking a big thing down into a little part, and it's like, and that's what Isaac said he started doing. He, he goes from you know worrying about playing 60, 70 plays to saying, I have one play to worry about, and it sounds easy, but if you can actually do that and get motivated for each play and worry about four seconds at a time. It really matters, and it seems like it mattered for him. It's funny that you say that because we haven't had this conversation. Uh, I talked to Stout yesterday, and he was talking about what he preaches to his guys, and he says, "He says, you know, it's really stressful being in the NFL. You know, you you got, you got PFF, you got you guys in the media, you got all this pressure on you." I tell him, four seconds, just worry about four seconds." Yeah. So you see where it's coming from. Yeah, and just and that's worry something about four seconds that. Rosen really so he's a professor at Michigan State and so that's where him and Nick Saban linked up long ago in the 90s and Saban really has adopted that and it's become a big thing everywhere he's going now at, at Alabama obviously so it, it's 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 worked yeah yeah it's BG worked. will never go see him hmm? BG will never go see him <laughs> Michigan State Michigan State uh if he's not Ohio State so he'll be okay um but it is fascinating, and it's been really cool to see how many players have been openly talking about the mental side of yeah. being in the league because it's something that for so long was like crazy stigmatized, and there were, players were going through it in the 80s and then sure. the 90s, and they just weren't talking about it. Yeah. So uh, it's cool that 
they're recognizing there are ways to to help themselves be better. And it's cool that organizations are giving them the resources. To right. Do it. And I think that's the key right there. And, you know, certainly Nick um, encourages everybody to, you know, to use all the resources that the team offers. And, and there's many from, you know, nutrition to, to, you know, sports science, to, to mental health and uh, diet, all that stuff. They, there's somebody to, to talk to and, um, they encourage it. Uh, it's it's terrific, and you're right. When I mean, when I started covering the team, this stuff wasn't even talked about. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there were certainly guys. I mean, there's so much pressure to you know to play hurt to um, to keep getting better. I mean, it's just to you know these guys are making a lot of money, and it could all go. They know it could all go away. A couple of bad games, could be out of the league, and how am I paying for that house? Got two kids. It's just it's a lot, and. Uh, uh, you know, there's it's certainly understandable that people need some guidance to get through that. Yeah, Isaac was telling me he actually compared playing offensive line to playing cornerback. You're backpedaling, you're on an island, and everyone only notices when you screw up. It's good. It's pretty good. It's, yeah. it's really true too. So uh, happy for him being in this moment. He's in a contract year. It could be his last game as an Eagle, and he has a chance to actually play in the Super Bowl. You got anything else? No. Want to add here? We want to remind everyone, uh, Philly Sports Bar and Grill on Scottsdale Road in Tempe. A little confusing, but it's Scottsdale Road in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, we'll be out there for a live Eagle Eye podcast around 4.30 local time on Saturday. Come out and hang out with us and get ready for the big game. Scottsdale Road turns into rural once you get into Scottsdale. Okay. Some some good local knowledge out of Rube because we've been here now for four months, it feels like. But uh, we're getting closer, I promise, the big game coming up just around the bend. If you enjoy the Eagle Eye podcast, please rate and subscribe wherever you get your pods. If you're watching on YouTube, please click the like button and subscribe there as well. We want to first, uh, we will lastly tell everyone we appreciate all those who have been listening to every pod and, and uh, we hear you guys and we're thankful for, uh, for all that. So we'll talk to you and soon. Let's thank Alex. Yeah, thank you to Alex, who's, who's been out here and, and killing work, it uh, killing all it, week. Running the pod and lugging all the gear around since we won't help him carry it. <laughs> all right. This has been uh, the Eagle Eye Podcast presented by Nissan. We'll talk to you soon.